Mm. I want to switch the conversation a little bit. Um, and we can talk about black women, healthcare, NHS, birthing, mortality rates. Mm. Chris, you can you can step to the mic and give us your opinion as well. You're here as well. Mm-hmm. If you feel if you okay. feel you've got something to contribute. Blum, bum, um, so how do I introduce this conversation? So the lady's name is it Candice Braithwaite. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a she's a mommy blogger. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a broadcaster, broadcaster journalist. Broadcaster, journalist. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Um, I don't want to talk of a black woman, so you can, you can leave this conversation. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> Kidding, just joke, joke, come on, come on, come on you, you know the vibes. Um, so Rochelle Humes, who, formerly of the Saturdays, yeah. married to Marvin Humes, who used to be in JLS, she's... Was she at F-Cup Juniors? Apparently was, so, I didn't, yeah. I didn't yeah, know. Apparently yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently yeah. so. Um, yeah. But I'm saying earlier, cousin of Paul Ince. Niece. Niece, sorry. Niece of Paul Lintz. Apologies. Niece of Paul Lintz. Yeah. Um, and she's a presenter now as well, if I'm right. Yeah. So it's daytime TV. <coughs> it's just radio. She does like Saturday evening <coughs> shows as well. Cool. So okay. I think Sunday is when the news kind of hit that she was going to be fronting this documentary, which was going to look into the disparity with regards to black women, childbirth, mortality, mm-hmm. just overall treatment in the healthcare system. Mm-hmm. I think I'm right. Black women are four times more likely to die during childbirth and kind mm-hmm. of trying to examine or figure out why this is happening. Isn't mm-hmm, it? Mm-hmm. Um, it's five, by the way. Five, my apologies, five. Thank you for, for the correction. Um, so yeah, the news came out and it created a conversation because she's mixed race, mm. you know? Um, and this young lady, Candice <coughs> Brave, like you said is a journalist, broadcaster, <coughs> mummy blogger, and she works in that space, had also been working on a documentary. And she's done a lot of work prior. Yeah. So this actually, from what I've looked at, her bag, her field. Yeah. Um, if anybody was qualified for such a documentary to present, host, lead the conversation, it would mm. be her. someone like her would be qualified from mm. what I've seen. Because mm-hmm. right. literally stuff that she's, she's devoted time, energy to this line of work and conversation. Mm. Um, so what happened, it created a conversation where it's like, why is this mixed race person at the front of this? Is this due to colorism? Has she stolen the role potentially from Candice? Some people, from what, I've, from what I've looked at, felt that maybe some people online kind of jumped the gun because as you know, these things happen, we get a knee-jerk reaction, rightly or wrongly. We then get a bit more information later on down the line. Um, and I can only go by what the people that are actually involved and know what behind the scenes was happening have said, innit? Yeah. So Candice came out and actually said, I think I've got her initial... Um, Response. Let me. Okay, cool. This was her initial response. I mean, this was on Sunday. So, uh, well, that got interesting. I appreciate the love and support. The truth is, up until six weeks ago, I thought I was going to present that documentary. I had been contacted in March of 2020. It had been an ongoing discussion for the last nine months of the year. I'm not sure what happened, but it's not meant to be. Although it will always be something I'm passionate about, I have I have to set my ego aside because it's not only who I who try to highlight. Um, the disturbing data when it came to black women dying in childbirth. Mm, mm. It's a group effort. Mm. It always has been. <clears throat> so as gutted as I was, the message remains the same. Mm. And it's such a serious issue that we should hold space no matter who mm. is narrating the story. Mm. Why is this happening and what can we do to fix it? Hopefully documentaries, books, and most importantly, listening to black women will help fix fix things. Red love heart. And I think, you know what, yeah... <clears throat> that line when she's like, um, it's a Group important effort. conversation period, yeah. regardless of who's narrating it. I think that is the position that a lot of people took when um, the pictures was, was like, well, when the news was first announced that Rochelle was going to be doing this. Because yeah. I was like, you know what? Yeah, this topic, I didn't really want to see any, you know, like in the UK gossip comments and showbread comments, et cetera, et cetera. I was like, I was happy to see that there weren't any comments saying, ah, oh, Michelle, Rochelle's not black though, blah, 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 because at the end of the day, this conversation is very, very, very important. Do you get it? Yeah. So that line that Candy said, I think is the standpoint that a lot of women or black women, I, well, I'm excuse myself, that's what I was. And I feel like based off of the comments and the reaction to Rochelle's announcement, that was where a lot of people were. Like, you know what, this, yeah, this is true. We do <clears throat> die disproportionately in childbirth. And I do want this to be on, BBC where it's on Channel 4 I to be cool and that's where it ended in it and it's like yes we're going to watch the documentary Rare Tear Tear the fact that Rochelle is hosting it is a was a separate conversation for a separate day do you get it that's part of a different issue however then all the other stuff happened and now it's like the two issues have been 
brought together and now you can't what other stuff happens just for clarity for our listeners Candice's post okay cool sorry when it came out that she was supposed to host it yeah. initially and then it came out that there was two separate documentaries and they went with Rochelle's and they didn't even want her to be involved in co-hosting now it's like alright cool so now you lot have brought this, this issue to the front because we know already I feel like we as black women black men in general in the UK we already know what it is do you get it we already know why I certain think, people I, I think sometimes I do but I think sometimes when these things happen some of us actually don't because really? as much as you're there mm-hmm. I felt like I saw the extreme and so I want to be clear mm-hmm. I felt like there was a bit of vitriol when people saw the initial flurry of tweets and threads mm. and then later on down the line Candice has come out and said no actually to clear things up it was two separate production companies I wasn't hers was in the work so then people were like I oh, say see you mm. shouldn't have jumped the gun but you know what I'm going to lead with a bit of love and empathy and be like mm. they didn't jump the gun no, there's no, been no. a pattern of behaviour here yeah, yeah, yeah. where if you're lighter and brighter yeah. you're more than likely going to get the role yeah. so if anything it's PTSD this yeah. is just my looking yeah, 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 man yeah. is triggered and more often than not you are right. So when you do see a pattern, it's not, it wasn't, it's not, I don't think it was irrational for black women to see that and go, hold on, why is Rochelle Yeah, no, we knew. This? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not saying it was irrational. Even if Candice wasn't doing anything at all. Yeah, 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 Because yeah, yeah. there's a term that I'm seeing at the moment, monoracial, where, mm. so if this is something specific to black women, and Chrissy correct me earlier, that it's actually five times more likely to die. Mm. Why is someone that isn't a black woman, for some people in regards to their interpretation of what black is, mm. leading the conversation? Now, I'm not saying Rochelle isn't black, that's for you to decide, but even within this, you're half white, you're half black, colorism plays a part. So it's like, even in our moment, like some people like what you're saying may take the pragmatic approach, but how long can we just be pragmatic and just kind of roll with the punches on? You know what? We just want to get to the finish line. Mm. Sometimes we have to call a spade a spade and say, you know what? Let's draw a line in the sand. But this, type, is, this type of documentary yeah. should be led by someone that yeah. I agree. is directly affecting. And in this instance, the Candice lady is over qualified mm. and, and over qualified and, and this is this is where i wanted to lead into the point where like sometimes we need to start holding these networks these channels accountable these production companies because at the end of the day yeah yes you want it to be as visible visible as possible of because course. you want to when as many impress, people see it you want as many people to see it and you want the bosses to be impressed at the numbers that you've done mm. but at the same <coughs> time there's <coughs> integrity in um filmmaking documenting things like documentaries Mm -hmm. where you get the right person for this job because it's an important message but it's not like uh a a generic yeah um documentary Mm. that you can just you know it's not like a police thing where you know they're taking you on a documentary of certain cases that they yeah 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 you know what i'm saying like i'm not saying that there's no integrity in that Mm. but you can just go to like random officers I know what you're referring you know to this yeah, type of conversation yeah, yeah, yeah. you need to it's be specific. like you need it's to go to niche. the person that is like it's very niche you need to go to the direct source where like they are well versed in what this documentary is about but the thing is yeah we know this and we can say that but the issue isn't even them not thinking that Rochelle isn't the source that's the problem is that they think that this is where it stops the issue isn't like who's hosting it who's not hosting it it's like the producers the directors the people who run the networks there's a a problem do you get it and that's yeah, what, that's because, what I mean when I said we know that Rochelle already Rochelle is more digestible to the that, British public she's, already, she's a well known face yeah. so it covers all bases I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going to discount like in terms of visibility she's going to be more visible than the Candice yeah, no of course, problem but the then days. if you also add in that you fit the stereotype that we have in terms of palatable. being palatable mm-hmm. and easily digestible for them, we can't. It can't just continue to be easily digestible. We just have I to agree. kind of figure this thing out. Like there is, there will be other instances where I may take a more pragmatic approach. But someone like this, even me as a man and a black man, I'm just you sit back a little bit, and like no, this is because all you got to do. I remember like going um, for years. I started with eczema, yeah, mm-hmm. and my mum would always say to me. When you go to GP, exaggerate. Mm-hmm. Say it's worse than this. You know why? Mm-hmm. Because the way they, they look at black bodies like, was stronger. When I had um, my toe was mashed up last year, yeah, mm-hmm. and I was like mad anxious. I think if I got gout, what's the fuck's going on? Oh no! I was in there, and this was someone that was ethnic as well, a person of color. I was like, oh, where are you from? Because your name's quite interesting. Oh, so I'm like, oh, my parents are from Nigeria. I'm from Nigeria. Blah blah. He's like, you guys are quite strong, and that that isn't doesn't even come from a bad place. Yeah. But if you've Let's say that's one person that I've interacted with on my level. Mm. Where does that permeate throughout the whole of the healthcare system? Is that the white man calling you superior than him? I, there wasn't even a white person. Person, I think it, um, he looked like could be like 
Morocco. Oh, Nigerian. you said. Oh, yeah, you yeah. said he was. So, yeah, cool. in this instance, we're talking about something even way more severe. Women in childbirth. Yeah. I know what my sister's label is like. My mom can tell me stories. I'm sure you can all share experiences. Your mom can tell me stories. I was, like, I was in the delivery room, bro. Like, like you know, of, innit? like I was there. They're, they're slow to maybe give you the epidural, the gas. I've heard stories where like women are on the gas and they are they got to take it away because they got used for someone else. Like, I know resources maybe stretch. I'm not blaming the individual per se, no, but yeah. like. Racism it's a permeates all thinking. aspects of society. Yeah. Oh, I can yeah. tell you for free. Yeah, like there was one time where um, uh, my daughter's mum was pregnant, and we had to something was wrong. Yeah, so we had to go to the hospital. So and it was like very close to you know her due date. So we were put in a ward that was next to. Um, well, it was a ward for like Excuse you me. know pregnant women that weren't ready to. Yeah. yeah yeah and there was one particular black woman that was like in create excruciating pain screaming yeah, down the whole ward. screaming down the whole ward you know to the point where i thought this sounds brutal mm. like, whatever's going on get that thing out of her do you know what i mean like I'm, and it's almost like my mind wanted to tell me like oh like maybe she's exaggerating because i don't know for whatever reason i know that women once they get to a certain point, they just want the baby out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it may have been like, you know, she was past her due date and she just wanted the baby out. Of course, so she yeah. was, but it, it, I, I haven't seen this woman like, you know, in, in, um, you know, her standing up. So mm. I didn't know how pregnant she was or, mm. you know, I couldn't you gauge, couldn't gauge that, anything. Yeah. But yeah. I just knew it was a black woman. Right. Yeah. And, the nurses and the doctors were acting like she was acting. Mm. Yeah. Like they didn't take it seriously. Mm. Yeah. So it was like, wow, like this is something that I I never took into account un- until I started to see mm. stats and things like yeah. about, you know, how, you know, women ain't or black women ain't been taken seriously when they're complaining about issues during mm. pregnancy. Like I'm fortunate enough to um have had a smooth one with with when it was you know the time for my child to come Mm. um you know we we walked into the birthing center at 5 p.m and just after midnight she was born so it was pretty quick yeah and we had a black uh, midwife. midwife you know Mm. that delivered the baby come on black power (laughs) it was (laughs) yeah black woman and although at first I thought that because I was so anxious at the time, mm. I thought that she was moving a bit too blase, like she didn't mm. really care about the situation. Mm. Obviously, I'm on edge. I need to make sure that everything runs smoothly. Mm-hmm. I need to make sure that the mother of my child is okay. Mm-hmm. You know, that's when I really started to understand like the severity of the situation. The situation, yeah. like, because in that short space of time, it was a mazzoline to me. Yeah, of course. Other women may be listening to this like that I've gone through it and be like, oh, later I was in, I was in labor for like 36 hours. No, but of course you're going to be like, oh my God. Do you know what I mean? You know, so yeah. I was, I was so concerned and, mm. you know, my baby was quite big. Mm. Um, so it was just like, you know, women lose a lot of blood. Women mm. lose a lot. Mm-hmm. Energy. It's hectic. Like, the it's whole mad. thing is just hectic. Like. The whole thing, the whole, procedure yeah yeah hectic. yeah it's hectic. and i'm just there helpless <laughs> thinking about everything needs to know, be okay like everything needs to be okay mm. i need to make sure that they're both mm. cool mm. for me to sleep well mm. and then after that i'm sleeping like a baby bro because i've like you done any work <laughs> <on breath. laughs> <laughs> there are pictures you see like of the man in the bed after birth bro they're, oh! the, they're the funniest so i'm sat there with the champions league trophy yeah. <laughs> with, the, with the twins so look at me look what i've yeah. done my mum was telling me that um when my sister's partner that um at the um at, when she was in labor and that the donny was nodding off and that but she was saying to me you was falling to me no no i was just resting my eyes because <laughs> i think he'd been at work the whole day but it was peak for them and my, my sister's like like god bless her it was my, my niece's birthday the other day she's one now um my mum was telling me like it wasn't easy like you know these and things not, aren't. And obviously not, luckily my mum works in healthcare so yeah, she was same. able to be on point yeah. I do want to cut some of the healthcare workers a bit slack because think about it, if you work on a maternity ward mm. you're dealing with babies all, yeah, every day just gonna say, seven yeah, days a week yeah. so your nature yeah. can come across blase not because you are blase but this is like I do this I all the time yeah yeah, yeah. You know I, know, I know that she 
is experience. It's you not for lack of care. She, let, she later to. said that, you know, I've been doing this for more yeah, than 30 yeah, yeah, years. Come yeah, on, bro. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean? But it's obviously like when you're a, when you're doing this for the first time, of course, you don't know what's, don't going, know what's on. going on. So your your trust is in you the want just the VIP experience, like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because we wanted a water bath, but it wasn't oh, okay. available at the time. Because mm. when we brought her in, it was like there's, there's no available. time for this. Oh, okay, oh okay, 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 okay. But we were blessed enough to be in a comfortable birthing center rather That's than good. the labor ward where it was okay. just it's More chaos. Hectic. Yeah, Do you like know what? That. My mom was a midwife, yeah, and I I understand that like you have to a be calm or calmer than the mother because of otherwise someone needs to be calm in this someone situation. needs to be calm do you know what i'm saying but at the same time like i don't think anyone's ever told me to do this but every time i've gone to the doctor i've always over exaggerated like i just have a like yeah you know what like this 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 and this and my hands are going numb and i can't because i'm like something has to be wrong here it do you know what i'm saying work. yeah time i went to I never right, had pro- I never usually Thank had you. problems with my teeth. Mm-hmm. I've got quite nice teeth. Oh. And um I just had this pain out of when I say out of the blue, mm-hmm. like it was killing me. Went mm-hmm. to the dentist. He told me that um in between like two of my back teeth mm-hmm. there was a crack and the crack had got infected. Oh, no. So I said we're gonna need to do a root canal. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have to do this, we're gonna have to do that. Mm-hmm. As before I went to the dentist, I was like this pain, you know, you just try to firm the pain, you just mm-hmm, try to firm the pain. Mm-hmm. You don't want to be seen as, cause you're not believed a lot of the time. I was like, yeah, it could be a million and one things, let mm-hmm. me just firm it. Mm-hmm. So I t- when I went there, I was taking like codeine, paracetamol and ibuprofen, literally every f- like on rotation because the pain was that Come bad. Come on future. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> codeine crazy. <laughs> so dumb. So after, so I've gone to the dentist, mm. told him, the medications I've been taking. Mm. He's told me what's wrong with me. Mm-hmm. They booked me an appointment for eight weeks later. Listen. So listen. the next, it got to like, I literally woke up in the middle of the night. Mm. Like when I tell you, cry, the pain mm. and I. T- listen, I pain in your take, teeth. It's unbear. I can deal with pain. It's a different. Anything no, you no one prepares you for it. No one says this pain, like childbirth, people say childbirth is, is different, but pain in your teeth. And I've never had a toothache before. <gasps> this was like oh, my first experience. Oh shit. Pain in your teeth. My first Bro, experience. Have you, had, have you had like the listen. wisdom tooth thing? Oh my God. I'm have you, unfortunate have you had any mad toothache? Listen. Bro, if they tell you I'm to telling sell you, your I'd rather door. get rushed. Listen, listen. I mean, I've been rushed. I don't know. No, no, no. Bro, I've been there. Yeah, bro, and it gets worse and in the night as well. Bro, when you think you're comfortable, you've made it to no, sleep. No, because you wake it, up it, 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 it connects the whole like nerve system everything. On, the, on, your, on your everything. Face. So it connects everything. to the ear and your, your brain, your, your, your jaw. jaw. Yeah, your, so, when you get pain you feel it in your neck. brim. You, when yeah. I tell you, Fam, literally, I feel it all in my brain. Like there was a I'm time like, yeah. where I had the um, the maddest toothache. Yeah, I, like I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. You survived, but you're here now. You're good. Yeah, yeah, but it was, it was just mad. No, I, it I know, was no, mad. I know, I know. When I, when I woke up, so went to the dentist, they booked me an appointment. I said, I'm literally there bawling my eyes out. I'm like, can you not see me any sooner? Mm. He's like, no, no, no. Like we're fully booked, blah, 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 blah. But if he was like, just come back whenever we book the appointment, fine. Next day, when I tell you, I could not take it. Mm. I drove myself to the hospital. Mm. I went into A&E and I said, someone needs to do something about my tooth. Otherwise mm. I'm going to kill myself. Oh my God. So the woman's looking at me like, sorry and I said they were like this is not a problem for the dent uh, for the hospital yeah, you need yeah. to go to the dentist yeah. I said I went to the dentist yesterday they put me an appointment for eight weeks time mm. I said this pa- I'm gonna kill myself mm. and I, I stood there I said I'm gonna kill myself mm. and at that point they are le- they can't turn you away after that point but if you and I know it seems dramatic but the pain was so bad mm-hmm. gone into the doctor he's pissed off he's like why have you come here if you've got a toothache mm. he told me what was I told him what the painkillers had been taken mm. I told him the what the dentist told me was wrong with me mm. he was like one second mm. called up the dentist they're doing all this back and forth mm. he was like can you go there now i was like yeah of course i can mm. so after he puts down the phone the guy said the doctor told me that he's actually going to make a complaint mm. against my dentist mm. because there was no reason that he should know in the amount of painkillers that i was on mm. and knowing what was wrong with me mm. there's no reason that he should have a sent me home without any treatment or b booked me eight, an weeks, later. For eight weeks later it's crazy but it literally took like disclaimer i wasn't gonna kill myself but mm. it literally took me having to go to the hospital and disturb these people who say, are busy and the woman's looking I mean? at me like are you mad and yeah I said, and I'm, I'm there like yeah, i I'm am kill myself. yeah and she's looking at me like you don't look like someone and i said i can't like 
but that's what it took. So Mad. imagine I've gone back to the dent from the hospital. Mm. I've gone to the dentist. Mm. The dentist then had the cheek to say to me, if the pain was that bad, why didn't you come back? I said, I was here less than 24 hours ago and you booked me an appointment for eight weeks later. He's like, but if it if the pain got worse, you should have come back. I said, I was here less than 24 hours When it hours was bad, ago. what do you mean got worse? You gave it me an bad. appointment for eight weeks later. <laughs> These people are um, mad. He's not a dentist anymore, long story short. Jeez. Really? Got that nigga yeah. struck off. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> mad. You're about to lose your horror. job. The you're about to lose like, your job. Yeah. It's actually crazy. Like, when I had a, a toothache and I had the same thing, I'm telling these people I can't function. Like I'm at work making a decision. Do I go home? If I go home, I've still got an hour journey with pain. Do yeah. I stay here? from the paint like it was mad yeah and you're right they said they're gonna tra- refer you where's the referral oh, no. the pain went by itself when i got oh. back from the yeah. dentist that day at work my director like my big 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 director was in the office mm. i walked back into the office from my dentist appointment the day before i collected my bag mm. and i said i'm going home mm. they were like oh so are you i said I'm no gonna i'm going like, home I'm in, it wasn't yeah. in the discussion like, yeah i turned to my area that my regional director and i said Peace. I'm out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, yeah. No, you, you can go. Call me or me. It, fine, me. But like, and even anyone that knows me knows that my tonsils have, like, oh no, I've always had tonsillitis. No. So every year, I used I used to have tonsillitis maybe three times a year if I was lucky. Huh? Wait, and what I mean, is tonsillitis? Is it like no, sore throat? So, no, no, no. So like it's your PR. tonsils on the side, they get infected, <sighs> but like a sort of toothache, it fucks everything. Oh like, I lose my, my voice. I'd usually get. Whenever I have tonsillitis, I would get bronchitis and laryngitis oh, as well. Oh, no, no, no. So you got the itis times Whoa. three? No. Like, I, I lose. My, my voice would be gone, everything. No. Yeah. The first time I ever had tonsillitis, I was in the hospital for three days. Like, I'd never had it before. I was 24. I only got my tonsils... I'm, I'm 30 now. I only got my tonsils taken out in October, just gone. Wow. So look, magnify everything you went through Mad. and what actually referenced Mad. to women in childbirth. Because I just want to send the conversation back yeah. here. So women in childbirth and what they did with them. That's why oh, we yeah. have the conversation, yeah? So you can see, oh, we've all had our different yeah, of experience. Course, I'm sure of if course. you go home and speak to your mum now, yeah. you're a midwife. You know, you was, you was there at the birth and that. You, we all know the rule, innit? Mm-hmm. So one thing I did want to ask, and it's got to be a direct question, should Rochelle, even if everything Candice is saying is true mm-hmm. what we've seen is true that mm-hmm. no she didn't steal an opportunity from her mm-hmm. it was two separate production companies mm-hmm. the mood online mm-hmm. with the fact she's mixed race and it's something that negatively affects black women at a disproportionate mm-hmm. rate mm-hmm. should she have turned it down because sometimes yeah. we talk about that personal responsibility should she have turned down the opportunity to front this documentary I think now yes but if can you talk me up please man? she I'm sitting here thinking should she have turned it down initially? Oh, oh well. sorry. On. Should she have turned it up and turned it down initially? I'm not set on that hill. Sorry, I'm not set on that hill that she should turn down initially. However, morally, maybe yeah, she could have. But then again, when it comes to like broadcasting and presenters. It is true that sometimes they are removed from the subject, but it just depends on the kind of documentary it is. However, in this instance, yeah, it's a very personal and very, it's not like, you know, you're an adult and you're looking at kids in gangs. Do you get it? Of course, that one, you're far removed from the situation. This is like a very personal and like, it's medical racism. So in that instance, maybe, yeah. Yeah. But now knowing what she knows, because yeah. I'm, I'm very sure that she was probably ignorant of the fact that there was another podcast, not podcast, sorry, there was another production happening, and her, her impact, the impact of her pr- um, presenting it, she was probably ignorant around all of those things around colorism. Yeah. Probably like you, all the examples you give me, she was yeah. in the Saturdays, la la from Essex, whatever, in it. But knowing what she knows now, it should be a case of you know what I, even if she can't step down, whatever I would like. Candice to, to co-host me. this with me because if she said that the production company how can they say no but you know it's then it's, I feel like this, how, this is how I look at it mm. if you then go and get Candice on it's almost an admission of guilt if you then go and of course of course, not an admission of guilt because she didn't make the, it's, it's not, not her production but company. in terms of everything that's happened it's like okay cool no, but you because could, my she thing could be is, an ally she could say you know what of course she could say you know what yeah cool you, the it, production it's an opportunity company, to be like a hero it, it is and yeah. if she if she, that's what she wanted yeah. she could have done it she could say look the production company should have got someone a bit more knowledgeable about this. So I would like Candice to come on this with me because she's done this, this, this. This is her field of work, innit? And cool, I'd like her to lead on it. So she didn't even have to fully step down. 
Read she, the room. Do you know what I'm saying? Read, Read the room. room. She Read even the room. has but to fully just, 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 like, just as an alternative conversation, what sometimes I said, I'm not in the room because like, I think we are sometimes in our echo that's chambers. That's what I mean. She was ignorant to it. No, that's what I mean. So but you can now, be ignorant to the fact of what's mm-hmm. going on. Um, I feel like, like I said, what I said earlier, Candice overqualified, she was in person. I do feel, even though like she said what she said, about two different product companies, I think it's a little bit co- convenient that mm. you work for nine plus months, research, conversations, back and forth, to then turn around and we're not going ahead. So what happens to all that work I've done? Who then gets the benefit off that? Like, you know, it's just, mm. it all feels a little bit weird. I'll, I'll read out like, obviously when these things happen, I don't blame people that are high profile mm. turning off their comments. I ain't gonna give you an opportunity to slander me on, on, my, on, on my profile, I respect Absolutely. it. So this is what Rochelle said, she said, hey gang, the situation around the documentary playing out online is complex, and I know that my response won't satisfy everyone. That being said, I'm going to speak to the facts and what I know to be true. Firstly, I recognize that I am contributing to a conversation that many black women have been central to and fighting for a long time. When taken on this project, it was necessary to the producers and I that the voices of the people who've been directly affected are centered in the storytelling. It's important to me personally and everyone involved in this documentary that this ongoing issue is brought to the widest possible audience. I want to utilize my platform to add further reach and visibility to this ongoing issue with the sole intention of creating broader awareness to affect change. I was offered the role as a host last year to go on an exploratory journey through the lens of the audience to ask the question why. To tackle any issue on a national scale, it involves a community of people pulling together to advocate and rally for change as ultimately we all share the same goal. This is bigger than me and not about me. I'm just bringing this topic to a wider audience and championing championing, sorry, the incredible women that haven't yet had their voices heard. I want to honour the brave people who have opened up and shared their journeys in the hope that collectively we can understand, learn from and end these needless deaths. I Red mean, love heart emoji. I mean, it was just, a, it was a lot of Waffle. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Waffle. There yeah, were whatever. many ways to skin a cat. Like, <laughs> they really you. If you don't get closer to that mic, Chrissy, I'm going. I'm going to strangle you. Less than a year ago, everyone was doing up virtual signaling, black squares, black square summer. Black I love that phrase. <laughs> but last year, less than a year ago, you're on this whole campaign, knowing like, yes, it stemmed from the George Floyd protest. Of course, yeah. But then part of uh, an offshoot was that was people noticing that in a lot of spaces, not just healthcare, that Mm -hmm. black people are often taken, their ideas are used, their Mm -hmm. content is used, and Mm -hmm. then they are Mm sidelined. That information is taken for promotion for something that is, just like you said, someone who's more palatable to Mm -hmm. the broad audiences. Mm -hmm. Less than a year you were talking about that, but now you want to stand up there and do up, it's complex. No, Mm. don't piss on me and tell me it's raining. You Mm. knew what you were doing. (laughs) You absolutely knew what you were doing. You know for a fact that there are many people that are more qualified than you. Mm. Have some bloody shame. Not every day, Mm. secure the bag. Because that's all it comes down to. Mm. It's absolutely not every day. If you were really hell bent on making sure that people received the best knowledge about this topic, would you not get the most qualified person about it? Mm. If you want to learn about something, you're not you're not just going to go on Wikipedia. No, you're going to get a tutor. You're going to go to the best institution. Mm. Babes, I'm sorry. You can't go from doing La 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 on Saturday Night TV <laughs> to telling me about, like, speaking about this topic, knowing how important it is, when yeah. before now, what were you saying? Yeah. Where are your tweets? But that's why I want to jump in. I know mm. it's one second. That's why I want to jump mm. in. How do we feel in the room in regards to things like that? So people that we may feel as a community have been on mute when it comes to social, political, racial issues. And then when things like the George Floyd or BLM happens, they then pop up or pipe up. Does everybody not have a starting point? Yeah, like, this, this, this is this is exactly where, um, you know, I would like, you know, cut someone some slack because mm. I don't, ex- like just because you're in the forefront for one thing, it doesn't mean that you're not well versed on something that you mm-hmm. may have never spoken about yeah. in public. Yeah. It doesn't mean well versed, it's just been just maybe or, having or the, just the having passion towards it. Or, or, yeah, 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 I agree. Or having that's some, what I was some saying. care and some dignity yeah, around it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Saying? Sometimes because people who's produce... to say that she d- she actually does care about this. No, this but I'm thing, sure she does. Or like, I'm sure she does. You know, she's we trying hope. to. We hope. Yeah, we hope, and she's really trying to. I guess bring the the. The, the content forward to, to the masses, of course, it would have been better to have 
um, you know, uh, sorry, I forgot her name. Candice. To, to front the, the the entire thing wholeheartedly, it would have, you know, it would have raised awareness in a different kind of way, like where the the message was met amongst you can gather everyone people on that social it was media as well. Because Candice, mm. she's not a small babe. She's got a decent fun. I think sometimes as well with bigger productions, sorry, fans, bigger productions, they sometimes ignore the ground a little bit. Cause I'm, yeah, I'm seeing, no, no, I seeing agree. Um, platforms like Black Ballad. Mm. There's different mm. black women led mm. platforms mm. that could be on hand for, okay, cool. Yeah. Let's hold um, questionnaires, Q&As. Let's yeah. really do this thing properly so that yeah. you've, you've got a platform. All you're doing essentially is Channel 4, ITV, amplifying whatever, it. is amplifying and cutting the check. Let the real people on the ground go and do the work. And we can all do this thing properly because at the end of the day, you know the end justifies the means, which is we're trying to raise awareness to this thing. So go directly to the people. I'm, and I'm, for me, Rochelle isn't the people. Yeah. But I don't, you're not on the ground. I, yeah, but I have to be honest with you, yeah. I don't hold it against her for accepting the job. I really don't. On this one, yeah. I do 100%. I don't. Because this, on this, like usually I, I get it like people... Well, as you were saying earlier that everyone has to have a starting point people mm. can start from somewhere I yeah. get that and mm. usually that's where I would stand mm. but with this mm. with everything that's happened before this year everything that happened in 2020 yeah. we're talking about racial inequality racial injustice mm. and you you're doing up Instagrams and whatnot. Mm. you haven't really spoken about any. you've only spoken about black issues mm. when it's benefited you yeah and that's what that's yeah. what you know the, the intention is pure the intention yeah. is not pure and that's, and that's where is. the issue lies i see you know what I'm saying? That's like, i see i, I see i totally get that like, i see i totally get that I see. at the Mom, end of the day i understand that she's I see. a black woman i understand I see. that so these issues affect her I'm, I'm not for one moment saying that because she isn't a darker shade that this doesn't affect her of that's course. not what i'm saying yeah at all yeah but my thing is if you are so hell-bent on making sure that the best, highest quality information reaches mm. the masses, you for a fact know that this is not this is not your fight. Mm. And you but should have some thing. shame and say, and, actually, no. And do no. you know what? In the same breath of like, cutting some slack to Rochelle, mm. I do strongly feel that it should have gone to the right person, which it's wasn't her. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and yes, we can say, we can sit here and say, oh yeah, you know, she should have passed up the job. Mm. But, how many people will do that? Yeah. And leaning on what Fo said is like, you know, all these all these companies or networks in a position to look on the ground, they don't. And mm. I feel that across the board, even within our community. And that's even like, the lack of having at, black talent they'll, in their like, offices they'll, and buildings. Oh, they'll overlook those yeah. that are on the ground. Always. For the most popular one. And always, the yeah. most popular one doesn't always mean... No. The best you should be, they ain't got the know. cultural currency. They yeah, ain't got yeah, the reach. Yeah, at all. They ain't got the streets, bruv. That's what it is. Yeah. Part. I think part of the reason this this is not the first time. I feel very passionately about this. Mm. No, this speak your mind. Speak your mind. This mm. isn't the first time something like this has happened. Something outlandish. Where didn't Leanne who, Pinnock was she not running a doing a documentary in regards to colorism as well? Is it out? Has it been oh, out? I don't know if it's out. The girl from Little Mix. Little yeah, Mix, yeah. She's married. She's engaged. To Andre, Andre Gray, Gray and it doesn't help that his old tweets about tweets, black women yep, came out yep. and it's apparently just, he, was, he, was, he, was, he was he was he was trying to constant. defend her it's constant. in a certain way saying that you know I'm, I haven't got it he know, basically verbatim. said verbatim you guys are jumping the gun it's not even come out as of yet in regards to Leanne's documentary or series what she's doing but then his tweets come out disrespecting black women this you and then allegedly at the time when Little Mix and Misha B were both on X Factor Leanne was involved in the whole Misha B's bullying and you know like mm. black woman dark skin black woman aggressive it's just too much it, just, it makes you look funny yeah, in the light doesn't funny. mean Leanne can't change possibly or grow or evolve but with these sensitive issues where black dark skin black women mono racial black women whatever the terminology you want to use was it Leanne that um, got into a little mix up with um, oh look at you pun with who uh, well <laughs> with um, Terrell Lewis no I don't I don't know and Akita I don't know if I'm No, but there was a there was a situation at a restaurant. I don't know. I between don't know. them two. I don't know. You throw him off there, I don't know. Man's doing um, that UK yeah. gossip. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, think that was time. You might be right, but I'm yeah, not aware of that. I think at the time, around, you know. What did he say something to her? I don't know. He just, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> With a lot of places now, I think the only difference is that as black people or not even just black people, as non-white people, mm. we now yeah. have our own spaces where we can say, yeah. actually, this is pretty fucked up. Mm. I don't like that. Where mm. people have to then take 
note of our voice because mm. for a lot of these things if it wasn't for twitter agreed people, a lot of the te- you might see the sensationist tabloid if it wasn't for twitter it would a lot been... of these places would not know how we feel agreed and then even then yeah. it's not further in the conversation agreed. So yes. they don't agreed. care they know what they're oh, doing absolutely absolutely i agree yeah, we're a small when, it, when, it, when it concerns us i feel like we need to hold those accountable for not giving us the right product that needs to be out there mm, we need the perfect it? advert so mm. do we boycott a documentary question I'm not i want to send that. the conversation yeah yeah of course I knowing know. what we know I, now I, I don't know i don't i don't even know no, who's, a be, about who's it benefiting who's it ben, who's but i'm benefiting? just saying that like when it comes to us about certain things that are under the carpet or mm. overlooked mm. we need to make noise about it we are yeah. now though to be honest Fubu, for yeah us, by yeah us, we are I now have someone who's not been and it's not even you just the baggy jeans I, like i need someone <laughs> who I, I don't really know how to articulate this but i need on those kind of issues, I need somebody who has been an expert affected by this, okay, even almost okay. generationally. Okay. Because yeah. if you're, let's just assume her mum's the right one. Mm. If your mum hasn't been through that, there's actually a limit to how mm. much you know mm. that this affects black women. Mm. If the majority of the women in your family are white and you go to the hospital as a biracial person, as a person of colour, but you're, the people around you typically are white. I don't know what the stats are, but people are going to look at you slightly differently. This you is get a little bit more favour in different spaces. Yeah, this yeah. is something that hasn't yeah. affected you. And don't mm. tell us that, be- oh, do you know what? The documentary's coming out. We just need to inform people. No, because mm. that time is over. You know what you're doing. You're doing it on purpose and we don't have to stand for it. Mm. I think, yeah. Yeah. She should, she, Eva, well, she's too late now because she's going to do it, but it would have been a nice opportunity. And even in an egotistical way for her, it would have made her look better. Do you That's get it? That's these things are for because they, yeah. they make you a pair. No, as in, like, if she said, cool, aware, I want Candice soft. on it with me. And then if you get yeah. Candice on it, it's like, you know what? what I'm saying? She would have won. Ally. Yeah, There's, she would have won. I talk but about she, Infinity Stones all the time. She chose the Being high allies in Infinity Stone as well. It is. Yeah. And what, it so is. what so what Crucial was talking about there, yeah? Um, what I did want to kind of just like highlight and maybe further the conversation a little bit. How do we feel about people that aren't that are mixed race not being looked at as black or fully black or monoracial or you know what, just I that think conversation it, it, in regards to it, their blackness? But would it be based on what they identify as, or based on what they identify them? of, based off some of the privileges that they get in society? Um, just a conversation in general, because when I when these things happen, I then see two sides of the coin where like people take it very literally and go, oh, so what? Because I'm mixed race, I'm not black, I can't talk up, I'm blackish, I can't get involved in the conversation. Mm-mm. Online, we work in extremes, innit? Yeah. So I think if you meet in the middle a little bit, I think it's the context, is that lighter, brighter, I'm more likely to get the job. I'm going to keep using that point. You're deemed more palatable. There's going to be space in society where like, you're more accepted. So if this thing affects dark skin, black people, black one race, whatever your terminology is, why are you at the forefront? And yet again, mm. we are being erased, othered, at the back of the queue and we're just kind of having to firm it. You know, like I said, we work in the streams. I don't know what Rochelle, if Rochelle left her comments and I don't know what type of comments she might have got on, on Instagram. Yeah, it's what people mad. Might have said, it's it? mad. So it I don't want to like alienate people in our community, but we have to tackle these issues and unfortunately, you're not even uncomfortable conversations. We just got to sit there and just talk the, talk the real. Because mm. yeah. pe- what I'm seeing online is people don't look at some people as black but this is can I just because I, I feel like that's a very Im, you know what yeah I feel like that's a very American like it's kind of like permeated how we see race now do you know why now. because the one drop rule has come over into the UK it's so where, bizarre where like, if someone has a little bit of colour in them they are deemed as black no, and I'm not, no, and I'm not no, mad no. at them for that but that's how society looks at them because you're a person of colour so no, someone like Rochelle so someone goes to you or Rochelle isn't black people look at you as crazy but people have <clears> good justifiable <throat> arguments as to why that person being looked at as is black is actually a negative to people who come from two black parents. I yeah, but because I'm, you're at I'm the front even, of the I'm not queue for about, everything. I'm not even talking but about. But it, it all lends to the same conversation. No, it's I know, but I'm not talking about the, the same outsiders. Like, I'm talking about the conversations that we have at the moment. Yeah, currently, all the things I'm seeing, and I'm like, because for me, growing up with mixed race friends, of course I'm not black. Like I don't understand how all of a sudden is a it's a conversation. Even though it's like, yeah, I'm not black, I'm mixed race. I, you're mixed race so it's a different experience so, let's, so they should identify yeah. as mixed race then yeah but your mixed race friends are going to say yeah. I'm mixed race do you understand I'm well all the time it's not all, it's not, it's not all the time we see it, it depends because like, fan, fan, how do you identify people yeah, people, p- people choose mm, like maybe if mm. you are the mixed race girl and you grew up with just your white side of your family no, you identify no, a certain no. way or yeah and like I was saying bro like my mum's sister mm. is mixed race mm-hmm. do you know what I'm saying so mm-hmm. I grew up with this woman I saw her as my second mum yeah like and she's older than my mum, so it's just like... 
OG. Yeah. She's the OG, do you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And she's mm-hmm. the one with like that type of temperament, like she pops off. Mm. Yeah. So I love that. <laughs> like, I always saw her. As black. As black. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it was like, you know, you get older, you start understanding, oh, what, like different dads to mm. to my mum, share mm. the same mum and obviously, mm. You know, I just saw this woman mm. in my household. I would I, I would stay around hers, mm-hmm. you know, and I never saw anything different. Mm. And then obviously you started to grow up, get out there and yeah. up, understand it a little bit more. Yeah. And then, you know, you had some friends that would be like, yeah, I'm, I'm mixed race. Mm. But my auntie would tell you that she's black. Mm. You know, you know, so... Mm. So Sometimes, then if your auntie's like, telling you that she's black then, mm-hmm. who, then how could we say, oh, you're not though? Well, well this it's is got it. to be content to nuance this is, though, because this is, this we is have to have at a certain trouble. point, this thing, this thing isn't going to stop. So at a certain point, we have to decide and figure this thing out because it isn't helping us because mm. it's creating more division. What then happens is people go to, oh, so if, if this mixed race people ain't black, we may not get such and such political leader. You may not get like a Malcolm X. You may not get this person. Mm. You may not get a Barack Obama. Mm. You may not get these figures mm. who mm. are. And then mm. on the other end of the conversation as a, as a rebuttal, mm. the person may go to, part of the reason mm-hmm. why they reach the upper echelon society is like, because yeah. they are mixed race. That's what my dad used yeah. to say about Bob Marley if, as well. if the guy is Barack Hussein Obama from South Sudan and he is black like Lil Deng, yeah, does yeah, he yeah, become yeah, yeah, yeah. the no, president of United States? Possibly not. But I think there, the issue is... The, you know what it is, yeah? My dad always used to say, the reason Bob Marley is, is like this is because he's mixed race. Okay. But that, for me, the issue isn't that he's mixed race, it's that he's light. I've never heard, it's, I've never referred to, uh, but, like, but it's I've never heard anyone no, refer no, no, to no. Bob Marley as mixed, mixed race. race. Exactly, yeah. but it's be, that's what I'm saying. I don't think that the the root of the cause is you're not black, you're mixed race. Like, like, I think the root of the cause is the colorism. It's not that, oh, he's not black. Yeah. Because you can be light skinned and be black. Of course. And of then course. you're still going to be further in certain positions, a darker um, black skinned yeah, person. Of course. So the issue isn't whether you're mixed race or black. The issue is, if we're being real, it's the colorism, I think is the crux of the but issue. It, it, all, it all ties the same thing because- It does, but, be, I, don't, because, but I, don't, I don't know if Because what happens is, is like, you, like so, so what you're saying is true. I could go in there, be fairer skin, have two dark skin a black parent yeah, but yeah. the perception of me is different yeah, now and yeah. I may play on that I, I, mm-hmm. yeah I am mixed race so mm-hmm. I'm not black whatever but mm-hmm. I I'm, I don't argue when they when they look at me a certain way and mm-hmm. I benefit off it mm-hmm. and day, that's how society is treating us but yeah. you, you're talking about this American thing mm. it's permeating us slowly but it maybe not to our benefit so maybe that's why we have to have co-defined lines it's not I hate you I don't love you my light skin my brother or sister sometimes unfortunately our experience are different you are of value to our community, but this is what's going on. Mm. And it's not a nice conversation to be had, but it has to be had because we're going to leave here today. I'm going to skip all the way home, you know, and me and Mrs. and enjoy my evening. But <laughs> it's going to, the conversation is going to continue. Yeah, it Absolutely. will. So like, will. It's, it's not done. And it's, I keep seeing all the time where like, people feel people are trying to take away from their blackness. You have gatekeepers of blackness. What is it to be black? It's a social construct. But unfortunately, we subscribe to social constructs. <laughs> if someone brings you a form now and asks you to identify a certain way, black, British, African, black, British, Africa, Caribbean, we all subscribe to this stuff. So unless we're really ready to do the real nigga, raw RNA <laughs> break down a social construct, it's going to keep happening and we're going to have to deal with it as a day-to-day reality. Mm. And these things will happen where someone like a Candice is overqualified yeah. and doesn't get the job. Yeah. And it's and that We've isn't, that. Yeah. isn't Rochelle's fault. No, but, but it's then the, the hard line people will be like, there's some accountability here. Like, mm. you, not all money's good money, bro. Mm. I know we're in a pan- panini and we need that check, yeah. but... Yeah. At the end of the day, like, you know... Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're in certain situations where like you can't sit there and expect someone to be like, oh, no, nah, you know what? I ain't going to pass it up if I feel like I'm um, a part of that community. Yeah, but identify. This is yeah. what I mean, yeah. Because I'm sitting here right now thinking to myself, would I take a job if someone said to me, I would like you to report on... Something black example, related. No, no, no. For example, like the farmers protest in India, yeah. Mm-hmm. Would I take the job? I think I'd be stupidity. I would, yeah. But I'm sitting here thinking yeah, like, no, but from, from, from a point have, of view, it could be like, you know what? No, but from a point of view, it could be like, 
it's a it's a reset not only am i educating myself but i'm also educating the audience so there's yeah. that angle do you get it it could be a research documentary as opposed to like this is i am from south asia this is what i'm experiencing my grandfather's fathers are farmers blah 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 yeah. different ways it can be chopped do you no, understand they said, remember show when it first came out that was the angle that was coming out that yeah they it was a want, research they piece. want their people that yeah present there's, diff- to be there's different ways it can be chopped detached, there's different ways you know, there's different not ways. too emotionally invested so it allows you to kind of be objective and you're just presenting the story where it's like, not like a louis Farouk going to like a American Ooh. jails. Yeah. yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. So that's how I can I can understand both sides of the coin. However, that's what I said. I can't I agree with Chrissy in that the, the time we're in right now and what you was doing in 2020, doing up Black Square and I stand with you and la 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 we la. We hold you accountable. We do. But equally you in how, 8K. How, yeah, <laughs> for real. But equally I still I'm like, you know what? Cool in it. But mm. now knowing what you know and knowing what everyone knows, she should have Eva brought Candice on or said, you know what, I would like to step down from this documentary because I've done the learning, I've been educated I've and it's not, learning. do you know what I'm saying? Oh. I'm educated. Thank yeah. you my followers for educating me. It's not my place to la 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 la. I've got Candice's most recent response, which is I think on the, it's about a day or two ago. It's what she said. So the producer of the show that Rochelle Humes is to present has called asking me to clarify that I was never in the running to present that particular documentary. That means, that sounds to me like they called you and said, fall in line, bend the knee and kiss the ring. That's how I read it back. <clears throat> so. But was it one production company and two documentaries or was it two different production companies? I'll, I'll read it out and hopefully I can, I can get this. So, yeah, this is what Candy says. So, for the record, I was contacted in March 2020 by a different production company about developing a similar documentary and had been asking, speaking with them throughout 2020 our last zoom call being on december the 1st 2020 i've been advised that the show which with rochelle was also being developed at the same time i was engaged in discussions and was obviously commissioned the producer said that fortunately for him his show was simply acquired first and these things happen in television i was also told that i would never have been a front runner for this particular documentary as they prefer their subjects to be removed from the situation so that the element of discovery about an issue is genuine, but that but that there would be would perhaps be room for another documentary of the same nature after this one is aired. They had asked me to contribute my expertise, but I declined mm. as I don't want my trauma to be mined for a show mm-hmm. where I have no control of the narrative. My agent had asked a few weeks ago if there was a possibility I could co-present alongside Rochelle and was told there was not. At the end of the day, I cannot overstate enough how important it is for this issue to be spoken about until we are able to save more black women. On a personal note, I've learned a lot and I'm thinking carefully about my future in TV on the whole. Thank you guys so much. And on this one, there's no red love heart. So, yeah. Mm. She's, I read it as... Yeah, I'm a little burnt by this Both situation. Both of the production companies done her dirty. Yeah, I'm burnt Both by the situation. Them. like, you know... What I've lended you my energy, my expertise, my research, my knowledge in this space. So it's like, but I, but so it's like listen, I can't come and drink champagne. So you lot got me at the back washing yeah. dishes. Yeah, of course. But I can't come and drink champers with you lot. It's a joke. That's, that's how I read it. Like I said, that's my perception. I do like the fact that we've got two dark skinned black women here and you both not exactly entirely on the same page, innit? Because it does show like. It's I'm not, not, not on the same page. No, no, no. I'm on the page. I'm you, on, no, I'm on the page. Have you put pen to paper though? Yeah, yeah, I have, I have, I have. We just cool. on different parts of the page. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm on the page. Are you writing in cursive? What's she writing in? Oh, I'm always cursive, baby. I'll be bold then. Oh, oh not bold, but I'll be stuck. like a Sans, a Helvetica. Do you get it? I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, not on the page. If I'm, you said Comic Sans, I was going to No, 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 <laughs> Helvetica, Helvetica. I'm fully on Chrissy's page. I agree with what Chrissy's saying. I, yeah, I'm on the page. Okay, cool. I am. Cool. I'm just looking at it from a, from the production point of view, like they, both of them. You work in broadcasting, so you understand sometimes these things aren't always as black and white. Yeah, yeah. So but absolutely. I am on the page. Absolutely. Yeah, they're not, but I, I'm definitely on the page. And I, do you know, I've said I think Rochelle probably. And you see how Chrissy, um, Chrissy, sorry, um, Candy said her agent requested. If yeah. Rochelle had said I want her on there, yeah. there would have been a possibility to do it. Maybe. Yeah. Do you get it? Yeah. But that's the thing. When the lights, my thing is when the lights are shining on you. What did you do when you had that energy around you? Mm. That's how I look at it. So. It's, it's, I hope it's a learning experience across the board, whether Rochelle learns directly from this or Candice. I mean, I don't, she learns about the mm, vultures, the wolves yeah, in I mean, TV. I don't know. If she had dark skinned women around her, yeah. she mm, would have done that. Yeah. Mm. So it's just, it's, 
It's, it's, it's an unfortunate situation, but you know, yeah. I'll be interested to know. So our listeners, our cuff links, our part, parts of the RNA community, use the hashtag, which is hashtag off the cuff pod. Let us know your thoughts, your feelings in regards to our breakdown of how this is all panned out. Because I'll be, I'll be interested to further this conversation online and just kind of gauge people's opinions. Um, 